Tonight, the Taliban is in complete control of Afghanistan nearly two decades after the United States overthrew their government. I'm Mike Montecalvo. And I'm Shannon Heggie. The U.S. Embassy in Kabul says the security situation continues to change quickly, including at the airport, and that U.S. citizens should continue to shelter in place. Now, President Joe Biden just addressed the situation a short time ago, saying he stands by his decision to withdraw U.S. forces there. But if Afghanistan is unable to mount any real resistance to the Taliban now, there is no chance that one year, one more year, five more years, or 20 more years, the U.S. military boots in the ground would have made any difference. And here's what I believe to my core. It is wrong to order American troops to step up on Afghanistan's own armed forces would not. This map shows the severity of the situation there. The country's capital fell this morning and led to chaos at Kabul's airport where thousands of Afghans were struggling to get out the next plane. At least five people were killed. Taliban fighters took control of the capital less than 20 years after U.S. forces overthrew their government. Afghanistan's president fled the country and much of the population is in hiding, afraid of what's next. President Biden is warning the Taliban not to interfere with U.S. evacuation from the country, threatening the use of devastating force if necessary. Now we're hearing from a local mother who lost her son during the war in Afghanistan. 12 News reporter Brittany Schaefer joins us now with why this mother says the current situation in Afghanistan breaks her heart all over again. Brittany. Well, Mike Shannon, Sergeant Peter McKenna lived his entire life in Bristol before joining the Army in 1998. The 35-year-old died while serving overseas in Afghanistan. His mother now telling me her reaction to the Taliban takeover. The chaos in Afghanistan bringing Carol McKenna to tears. So heartbreaking to see this. The Gold Star mother lost her son, Sergeant Peter Andrew McKenna, during a complex attack in 2015. Congressman Jim Langevin says American heroes and their families deserved better. Who, who bore the, 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 the greatest sacrifice of all. Uh, we owed them, and the administration owed them a better plan than what, uh, than what we're seeing unfold right now. And again, I'm disappointed in this, uh, in this decision to withdraw and how it's been handled. Senator Jack Reed, who chairs the Senate Armed Services Committee, says the speed the Taliban took over was shocking and not anticipated. He also says he didn't expect Afghan military forces and leaders to surrender. The expectation was that there'd be a more coherent and more effective uh, uh, resistance. As you know, we spent 20 years and we spent a lot of time and effort, but ultimately that did not succeed. The Taliban swept into Kabul Sunday after the government collapsed. The same city Sergeant McKenna was killed and same group responsible for the attack. His mother Carol didn't want to show her face on camera, but tells me her son would be disappointed and concerned for thousands of Afghan translators who worked with U.S. troops. Andrew um, used to vet his translators very well and although he never told us any names, he spoke very highly of them. And the fact that they are all in danger now is heartbreaking. These interpreters put their lives on the line and their families' lives on the line to protect uh, uh, our, our soldiers, our forces there. And according to the AP, the Taliban has declared translators as enemies and traitors. Senator Jack Reed says our main focus should be getting them safely evacuated as well as diplomatic and military personnel. For now, live in Providence, I'm Brittany Schaefer, 12 News. But we begin tonight with in-depth coverage of the fall of Afghanistan to the Taliban. In his first public comment since the Afghan government's collapse over the weekend, President Joe Biden says he stands squarely behind his decision to withdraw U.S. forces. At the same time, he said the chaos at Kabul's airport has been, quote, gut-wrenching as desperate people try to get on airplanes. President Biden admitted that the Taliban takeover happened much faster than his administration expected. But he blamed Afghan political leaders and the Afghan military saying they gave up. He also said going back on the deal former President Donald Trump made with the Taliban last year to withdraw U.S. forces would mean sending thousands of troops back into combat, prolonging the 20-year war. I will not mislead the American people by claiming that just a little more time in Afghanistan will make all the difference. Nor will I shrink from my share of responsibility for where we are today 
and how we must move forward from here. I am President of the United States of America, and the buck stops with me. President Biden says they will continue evacuations and warned the Taliban that any interference with the withdrawal would be met with force. In a statement this afternoon, former President Donald Trump says it's not that we left Afghanistan, it's the, quote, grossly incompetent way we left. Rhode Island Congressman Jim Langevin also angry about the withdrawal, calling it catastrophe. He claims he asked the president and the Pentagon for more details about the withdrawal plans and what contingencies they had if things went wrong, but says he received no response. I think the, the withdrawal is a disaster. The administration, the president, uh, and uh, the Pentagon owed a, a, a much uh, more detailed plan and thoughtful a plan for our men and women in uniform who have served there, uh, their families, especially men and women in uniform who have given the ultimate sacrifice. One of those who made the ultimate sacrifice in Afghanistan, Sergeant Peter Andrew McKenna of Bristol. 12 News reporter Brittany Schaefer talked to Sergeant McKenna's mother today and joins us live. Brittany. Well, Mike Shannon, Sergeant Peter McKenna died in 2015 in Kabul. His mother, seeing the state of the of the country's capital today, says it's bringing her to tears. Very disgusted and disappointed. The fall of Kabul opening old wounds for Carol McKenna. I think they should have thought things through and planned a little bit better before they just shut everything down. McKenna, who didn't want her face on camera, is the mother of Sergeant Peter Andrew McKenna. The 35 year old was killed during a complex attack led by the Taliban six years ago. The same group now taking control of Afghanistan. The lifelong Bristol resident joined the army in 1998 and went on to become a Green Beret. He was a wonderful son. I used to tell him and his brother, um, I loved them because they were my son, but I liked them. They were good people. Senator Jack Reed, who chairs the Senate Armed Services Committee, says the speed the Taliban took over was shocking and not anticipated, as well as Afghan military forces surrendering. The expectation was that there'd be a more coherent and more effective uh, uh, resistance. As you know, we spent 20 years and we spent a lot of time and effort, but ultimately it did not succeed. But McKenna tells me her son's goals did succeed, and she hopes that continues. She says the 17 year veteran wanted to avoid another attack like the one that started the 20 year ordeal on September 11th. Andrew fought over there and always said they didn't want them over here again and not endanger any more Americans. And Senator Jack Reed says the focus is to continue to secure the airport as well as safely evacuate diplomatic and military personnel. President Joe Biden did authorize 6,000 troops to assist in the departures. Live in Providence, I'm Brittany Shaver, 12 News.